Hi, I'm Dr. Steve Edelman, and I'm in front of the office of Dr. Nick London, a diabetic eye specialist, and I'm here for my annual diabetic eye exam. Now, I know I'm going to get dilated, so I came prepared. Let's go inside. Hello, everybody. My name is Steve Edelman. I am founder and director of Taking Control of Your Diabetes. I've been living with diabetes a long time, and I am here with Dr. Nick London, who is a ophthalmologist with a super specialty in diabetic eye disease. And I'm here for my yearly eye exam. So uh, Dr. London, um, I can just call you Nick. Please uh, call me Nick. Okay, we've known each other a long time. Um, I've always wondered, I come every year, I'm doing pretty good, and I still have to come every year. So why do I gotta come every year just for you to tell me I'm doing fine? You know, Steve, um, so you know, diabetes is a very chronic disease. Um, and even though you've been doing great, and I totally agree, you've been doing awesome. Diabetes is very insidious. It has a chronic course. The signs and symptoms of diabetic retinopathy are essentially zero until it becomes really severe. And if I catch it early, I can circumvent that risk. I can get in, I can treat it with either laser or maybe even injections, which can reverse the course and has a very high chance, 95% chance of preventing severe loss of vision. So you're saying that I could have pretty good retinopathy, pretty advanced and not even know it myself. You which... have no idea. I mean, one of my attendings back when I was training as a fellow a decade ago said, it's like walking up to the edge of the Grand Canyon blindfolded. Every step is fine until that last one. Okay, so what's next? Well, the first step is to get some basic information. We gotta check your vision, your eye pressure, and get some imaging. Great. Okay, so one of the first things we do is have the technician check our patient. We try to make this as easy and, and pleasant as possible. This is the visual acuity being tested. This is a, an ocular occluder, so you can see the left eye being covered, the right eye open. Dr. Edelman's now gonna flip that down, and this is checking pinhole acuity. This gives us some approximation if the glasses are correct or not, or if there's significant cataract. Here we have the technician checking the pupils. We're looking for what's called an afferent pupillary defect, which can be a, a sign of uh, damage to the optic nerve or severe damage to the retina. Next, we put in our eye drops. We'll typically numb the eye with topical drops and then apply dilating drops. It's really important to get good dilation to do a very thorough retinal exam. We have to check the eye pressure. This is checking the pressure with what's called a tono pen. This gives us a very good readout eye pressure is an important issue in patients with diabetes, not only open angle glaucoma, which is the more common form, but also neovascular glaucoma can develop, which is a very severe cause of glaucoma. And here you can see the, the dilating drops being applied. The technician will gently retract the lower lid, put the eye drops in, and they typically take about 10 to 15 minutes to work. Depending on the drops that we use, the, the duration is typically four hours up to six hours. Next, we have our imaging. This is what's called optical coherence tomography. This is giving us a living cross-section of the retina focusing on the macula. Very important for us to look for evidence of macular edema. It shows uh, almost a cellular level of detail. Color fundus photos are also obtained uh, at every annual visit or more often if needed. Um, they should be relatively quick and easy. You can see that flash of light. Uh, during these, which is slightly uncomfortable when you're dilated, but is very, very quick and easy. All right, Steve, good news. Everything looked really good in the initial imaging. I'm gonna hold off on showing it to you. First, I wanna examine you. So I'm gonna do a slit lamp exam to do front of the eye exam, and then I'm gonna take a look with what's called my indirect ophthalmoscope to look at the back of the eye, the retina. Okay. Ready? Yep. Glasses off. All right, I'm gonna ease this in here. This is a really bright light, but you can tell me to adjust it, and I will, I want you to be comfortable. Chin all the way in there, forehead against the bar, perfect. You look good, are you comfortable? Yes. Okay, so this is a slit beam. It's a very bright light and I'm gonna shine it on the front of the eye. I'm looking at your cornea, I'm looking at your iris, as well as your lens. As you know, diabetic patients can sometimes develop early cataracts. And it's important to recognize that. It's a fairly important cause of vision loss. Look right at me, right at my light. So I'm looking at the retina. This is a focused beam of light. It allows me to see past the lens to the retina, I'm looking for retinopathy, I'm looking for new blood vessel formation, and I'm looking for bleeding. Look up high. Good, you look beautiful. Look left. Fantastic, look down. Right. Beautiful, I'm gonna lean you forward. Okay. 
All right, now we've got all the information we need. Let's look at your imaging. Okay. Steve, so these are your results here for the photos that we took. On the left here is a color photo of the back of your eye, your retina. And I know you've seen this a million times, but I always like to run through it. You've got to understand sort of what we're looking at so that you know why I'm sort of interpreting things the way I am. There are two main things that diabetes can do to the eye, diabetic retinopathy and diabetic macular edema. Diabetic retinopathy refers to damage to the vascular tree. If you look at the photo here, right in the middle of the optic nerve, which is this white circle, you have these red lines. Those are your blood vessels coming into the eye. Retinopathy would refer to damage to the walls of those blood vessels. You'd get little beating, little microaneurysms that can then rupture and bleed. That can cause progressive loss of blood supply to the tissue. If you get progressive loss of blood supply, you get an upregulation of different chemicals in the eye, which can be very, very toxic. The main one that you may hear about is called VEGF. We can inhibit that toxicity if we catch it early. But again, you would have no clue that anything is going on until problems start develop developing. Your scans here look beautiful. You've got evidence of prior laser, which has stabilized your eye, and just very minimal hemorrhages. So you're doing fantastic. Diabetic macular edema is something that we have a little harder time seeing on that photo, but in this scan here, which is called OCT, or Optical Coherence Tomography, it's like taking an MRI scan of the retina. This is a cross-section right there. This is last time, and this is today. Macular edema refers to swelling in the center of the retina. The center of the retina is called the macula, and edema is swelling, so macular edema. And that's what it looks like right there. That is that little, my left eye? This is your right eye. My right eye. Yeah, okay. this is your right eye. So you just have a very small amount of macular edema and relatively unchanged from last time. So I would not worry about that at all. We treat it if we think it's visually significant. We're not going to over-treat it. My goal is not to inject your eye more than you need it to be injected. So don't be afraid of coming in having me find things. I'm not okay. going to overreact. <laughs> I promise you. Thank you. <laughs> Again, cross-section of your left eye looks beautiful. Just a little bit of swelling. Uh, and it's been that way for a while. And we're not going to treat it. You're doing fantastic. So good job. Everything you've been doing is perfect. That's great. Well, as we finish up the exam, I think both Dr. London and myself want to emphasize some of our closing points. Yeah. So, uh, Steve, again, I want to emphasize you're doing great. Um, even though you're doing great, it's really important to come in. You can't skip out on, I know you're a busy guy. You have a lot going on. Everybody's busy. You got to make a point of it. These things can creep up on you and you can end up having severe permanent loss of vision. So make a point of coming in on your regularly scheduled visits every six to 12 months. Okay. There's some ways you can remember that. So you got to find a way to kind of trigger that memory. You know, what my wife does a lot of the time, she'll just put a reminder on the calendar once a year and you can make it a recurring reminder on your Google calendar, whatever you use, and that'll remind you to come in. Another thing is that it doesn't have to be with a retina specialist. I can certainly do the job. I can certainly let you know how you're doing, but so can a lot of other well-trained eye doctors. Very good optometrists, very good comprehensive ophthalmologists. If you need names, I can get them for you. Our visits can be long and labor intensive. I'm going to do a thorough job, but so will these other people, and it'll be a shorter, easier visit. The most important thing is getting in. Got it? Yeah. I, you know, <laughs> maybe when I pay my taxes every year, it's, that's painful. <laughs> <laughs> and so Are you saying I'm as painful as taxes? <laughs> I love it. I know you love me, but. Okay. Now, I'm, you know, what I'm thinking about getting pregnant. And Congratulations. Are the, <laughs> are the recommendations any different for women that maybe considering getting pregnant or are pregnant with diabetes, living with diabetes? So um, there are. It's a really important question. So a patient who's planning on getting pregnant, uh, if they do get pregnant, can have a very severe worsening of their disease. And, and again, it, they would have no clue anything is going on. We've seen these patients come in. They did not know they needed uh, more frequent eye exams during pregnancy, and they come in with severe complications that are very hard to treat. And the last thing you want to do with a patient who's pregnant is put them under anesthesia and make them need surgery, start doing injections in their eye, which could have unknown effects on the developing fetus. So those patients who are planning to get pregnant need to come in every one to two months during that pregnancy, regardless of their disease control. Dr. London, thanks so much for seeing me today. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Well, thanks all of you for watching and please take the information we both spoke about to heart. Make sure you get your yearly eye exam or sooner depending on your own particular situation. We'll see you in about 12 months.